Today, we're going to talk about swizzle and channel manipulation in shaders in Unreal and in Unity. Let's go. The first thing that I want to do is make sure everyone understands what I mean by channel manipulation. In a shader graph, the data that flows through the wires from one node to another is stored in channels. They're also sometimes called components. All data is made up of one or more channels. It's easiest to see if we take a look at the texture sample node. Textures have three or four channels. They have red, green, and blue, and they also optionally have an alpha channel. We can see that on this texture sample node. It has outputs for RGBA, RGB, and then also red, green, and blue, and alpha individually. If we choose the RGBA output, we have a wire with three channels in it. And the same thing is true for the texture coordinate node. If I pull this out, I have texture coordinates with two components, a U and a V. So when we talk about channel manipulation, we're talking about reformatting this data, getting rid of channels, adding in new ones, swapping in the order of the channels and so forth. We're not changing any of the data in the channels, we're just changing how many of them there are and in what order they're in. So that's what I'm gonna show you today. Before I show you the various nodes that help with channel manipulation, there are three things that I wanna point out right up front. The first is that all of the operations that I'm gonna show you today are completely free. That means they don't require any compute power on the GPU. So you can do all of the complicated channel manipulation that you want and it won't increase or decrease the amount of time it takes the graphics chip to run your shader at all. All of these operations can be done with no performance penalty. However, when you perform math operations, it does cost more to do an operation on data with more channels. So it's best to use channel manipulation techniques to reduce the number of channels down to only the ones that you need before doing the math. I'll show you some examples of what I mean by that when we start talking about the specific nodes. Second, in most of the videos in this series, I've showed that Unreal and Unity are very similar in the way that they work. Their nodes are similar and they work in pretty much exactly the same way. However, with node and channel manipulation, it's different. Unreal and Unity have very different nodes for doing this task. So I'll be showing how things work in both engines and comparing and contrasting them. For some channel manipulation tasks, it's easier in Unreal, and for others, it's easier in Unity. Uh, you'll see what I mean once we get into it. And third, we use letters to represent the channels. Sometimes we use R, G, B, and A to represent the four channels, and sometimes we use X, Y, Z, and W to represent them. R, G, B, and A are more common when we're describing color, and X, Y, Z, and W are more common when we're describing other data like normals. But the two can be used interchangeably. We can use R, G, B, A or X, Y, Z, W, and it means exactly the same thing. So don't let that confuse you. All right, so let's do our first task. So we're gonna start with four channel data, R, G, B, A. And our goal here is going to be to drop the alpha channel so we only have three color channels. This is a pretty common operation if your color data has an alpha channel but you only want to change the color. If we do math on all four channels and then separate them after, we've done a little bit of extra math. So it's important to separate them first. In Unity, we start out with a sample texture 2D node, our, our texture sample and it gives us RGBA data from the texture. If we only want the RGB, we can use a Swizzle node for that. Swizzle is the most powerful and flexible of all the channel manipulation nodes in Unity. We'll be using it a lot today. 
Oh, and notice that Unity has all of the channel manipulation nodes in this channel category, so they're really easy to find. So I'm just gonna add a swizzle node here. And I have an input here for RGBA, and it's coming in. And then I have an out that's currently set to be a float four, and then I have these letters here. Well, all I need to do to mask out the alpha channel is just type in the letters for the channels that I wanna keep, R, G, and B. Now notice that my output port has turned to yellow, which represents a three channel uh, data type. So using the swizzle node, I've been able to successfully sample out the, the alpha channel. And my output here is just the RGB. And as I said before, these letters can be used interchangeably. So I could also talk, type X, Y, and Z, and it would give me the exact same results. We just use RGB in this case because we're dealing with color from our texture and it's a little bit more clear, uh, but the result is the same. All right, let's switch over and do the same thing in Unreal. So in Unreal, it's really simple if I'm using a texture sample node because it has a port that's designated specifically for RGB. So if I connect this port and output to something else, I'll only get the first three RG and B channels and I won't get the alpha. So it's dead simple. I don't need any extra nodes to filter out the alpha channel. But if I do happen to have a node that has four channels like this one here, I've got 35.59, 0 0.15 and 21. Uh, if I just want to filter out the first three, I can use a component mask node like this, and then come over here under the mask and make sure that R, G, and B are checked because I want those three channels. And this will just give me the first three and filter out that fourth channel or the alpha channel. Now this component mask node is also really useful if I want to filter out just a single channel. So let's do that. If I uncheck the G and B uh, boxes here, now I'm outputting just the red channel. So I'll get a single channel output from my channel mask here. Or I could check the R and G boxes and now I have two channels output. So I'm using this component mask to get rid of some of the channels and just keep the one that I want. Like if I, if I wanted just the blue channel, for example, I could have just the blue channel. Let's see how that's done in Unity. So back in Unity, as you might imagine, I can just use my swizzle node like I did before, but if I only want the red channel, I can just type an R. Now my output port change, changes to this light blue color, which is a single channel, or I could just type G, or just B. So I can use the swizzle node to filter out or to isolate uh, multiple channels into a group, or I can use it to give me just a single channel. That's pretty cool. All right, so in this example, we use the channel mask node to split out the alpha channel and just give us the RGB color. Well, what if we wanted to do the opposite? What if we had one node with a color and another node with a, a single value or an alpha, and we wanted to combine them together. Let's take a look at that. So here we have a three channel color. We have red, green, and blue. And we also have a single float value. In this case, it's 0 0.2. And we wanna put these two together to form a single float four value. And we can do that with this really convenient node called append. So if I just type append here in the, in the menu, it's called append vector. I can put that down and I can put my RGB values into A and I can put my float value into B. And now what I'll have is a float four that has RGB and A. So this is combining my first three values with uh, my last value here and giving me a four channel value. Now, one important thing to keep in mind is if I were to wire this single channel value into A and my RGB into B, now I would get my alpha value first and then my R, G, and B, 
And so the order that you wire things into this append node is pretty important. So make sure that you get your values in the order that you want them to, to come out. Uh, this append node is pretty cool. I can append uh, two float two values. Like if I wanted to put UV coordinates uh, in the first two channels and another set of UV coordinates in the second two channels, I could do that. Like if I were to put text chord zero into A and let's change this to text chord one, I could put that into B. Now I have a nice set of, of UV coordinates all packed together into uh, one single float four value. So this append node is really nice. Let's do this same thing in Unity. And unfortunately, Unity doesn't have a really nice append node like that. And so we're gonna use the split and combine nodes. Here is our three channel uh, color value, 0 0.5, 0 0.2, and 0 0.1. And here is our single channel value, 0 0.2. So I can wire that into the alpha of my combine node. And then I need to take my vector three node and use a split to split it into R, G, and B and wire those into R, G, B input uh, sockets and then wire this one into A. So now I have a single combined R, G, B, A value that's made up of both my vector three value here and my float value. So it's a little bit more complicated to do this in Unity because I have to use the split and combine nodes because of the lack of an append node. But remember what I said at the beginning, uh, even though I'm using two nodes here, all of, these, um, all of these channel manipulation operations are completely free on the GPU. So it doesn't matter how long or, or how many uh, complex things that I'm doing with my channels, uh, it won't require any more any additional compute time to do on this on the gpu and just like i've done here with a, a vector three value and a float i can do something similar with a vector two value uh, we saw this in a previous video where i wanted to combine the x and the y of a normal uh, with a z value of a normal that i computed separately and so in order to do that i can take my vector two value split it into its R and G, and then wire those into R and G of combine. And then I can take my single float value and wire it into B. But as we saw before in Unreal, this kind of thing is really easy to do because I can just take my, um, my vector two value and append it with my vector one value I don't need two nodes to do that. I can just do it with one. All right, let's take a look at one last example. And in this example, what if I want to swap channels like trade the red and the green? And you might ask, why in the world would you ever want to swap a channel with another one? But it's actually a really useful thing to do. For example, swapping texture coordinates, the U and the V channels uh, gives you a 90 degree rotation for free. So if, if I disconnect this, you can see my, my vase texture uh, is right way up. But if I go ahead and use this swizzle node here in Unreal to take my X and my Y of my UV coordinates and swap them around, now I've rotated my vase and my swizzle operation is completely free. So I've done this rotation without using uh, any math or any expense on my GPU. So this is something really useful to do. In Unreal, you can do this with the swizzle node. And what swizzle means is just rearranging channels. So you can see my swizzle in Unreal gives me two options. I can take in a two channel value and I can swap the channels, or I can take in a three channel value X, Y, Z and swap them to Y, X, Z. But there's no way to do X, Z, Y, or Y, Z, X, or Z, Y, X, or Z, X, Y. So if I want to do one of those, uh, then I need to do uh, something a little bit more complicated. I need to use a split component node, and I need to break those out into their separate R, G, and B values. 
And then I need to use an append many node, and that will allow me to plug R, G, and B into any of the R, G, and B inputs. So here I've done, uh, I've taken R, G, B and made it into G, B, R. <laughs> so you can see how that's working. And then I can output uh, either two of them, three of them, or four of them. Um, but this kind of thing is really simple to do in Unity. And let's swap over there and I'll show you why. So once again, Unity has this really powerful, uh, really convenient swizzle node, where if I want to swap my components, I can just type uh, the order that I want them to appear in. So here I have a U and V value and I've top typed Y X, which swaps the order. And just like we saw in Unreal, it's rotated my vase 90 degrees to do that. So I can do X, Y, or I can do Y, X. And similarly, I can do this on data with more values as well. So if I have four channel data, I can do Z, X, Y, W. I can do uh, Y, Z, W, X. Um, basically anything I can type, I can rearrange those channels in that order. So <laughs> I I love me some swizzle node in in Unity uh, and I wish Unreal had a node uh, similar to this. And similarly, I wish that Unity had an append vector node like Unreal has, uh, but we can't have it all, can we? Uh, one more thing that the swizzle node can do is that it, you can type letters multiple times. So for example, I can type XXX and this gives me a float three value with uh, the single float value in all three channels, or I could type YZZ, and this will give me the green in the first channel and the blue in the second two channels. Uh, so I can do all kinds of really fancy stuff with this swizzle node. All right, so we took a look at all kinds of examples of rearranging channel data, uh, filtering out channels, adding new channels in, and swapping the order of these. I hope you've been able to see that uh, while Unreal and Unity are different in the way they go about things, uh, they both get the same job done. And you can do these uh, channel manipulation operations pretty much the same uh, in both engines. In some cases, Unity is more convenient and in other cases, Unreal is more convenient. Um, but I hope overall, you've been able to learn that it's pretty easy and pretty straightforward to manipulate channel data in both engines. Well, that's it for today's video. Uh, be sure to come back next week for more shader goodness. Thanks for watching everybody, and we'll see you next week.